The port you see in the distance is San Pietro, a fishing village. My name is Robert Jackson, and San Pietro is my home. While the people of San Pietro are mostly fishermen and seafaring men, and my father, Captain Jackson, has spent his life at sea, I have never followed in his footsteps. Six years ago, a lifelong friend of the family, Jose Francisco, sailed from San Pietro as first mate on the schooner Miami. Soon after that, the ship and entire crew was reported missing in the South Seas. The incident has long been closed and forgotten by the people of San Pietro, except for two persons who still have hopes of Jose Francisco being alive, his sweetheart and mother. Robert! 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 Look! Robert! Look, Robert! 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 Look! Robert! I know Jose lived the Miami headed for those islands six years ago. Man and woman found dead on beach of lonely Galapagos Island. Traces of other whites also found there by boat driven off its course. You, you can get your father to search for him when he takes the tuna trip. Oh, oh, please, Robert, do this for me. Please. Those islands are a long way off our tuna course. But I know I can get Dad to do it. Oh, I knew you would. Just leave I it to me. I knew you would. Thank you. Now I want you to promise you won't worry. Everything will be all right. Oh, hello. <gasps> hello, Robert. Where are you going? To lunch. Lunch? <laughs> Come on, let's get in the boat. Mm, all right. Louise, I love you. Why can't we get... Please, Robert. Not yet. Well, suppose I can prove that Jose... Well, that he'll never return. Maybe. That's all I wanted to know. Have one? Mm-hmm. That looks like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> All right now, Toby. All right, sir. Oh, Tiny! Hey, Tiny. Your baby's waiting for you. <laughs> Hello, Angel. Hello. Hiya, baby. How long will you be gone this time? I'll miss it so much. Oh, I'll be back in no time. Oh, I don't mean you. I mean the violin. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be seeing you. Well, here we are, all set to go. I'll never forget what you're doing for me. You are a darling. Just remember, don't you worry. We'll search every inch of the islands. I'll see to that before I'll ever return. I know you will. Look, there comes Dad. Will he be surprised when he sees me on deck? Goodbye, Louise. Goodbye. Hello, pal. What are you doing here? You gonna go along with us? I'm going, Tiny. But Dad doesn't know it. Yet. I'm gonna make him search the whole South Sea. For what? To find out whether or not Jose is still alive. Are you with me, Tiny? Hmm? Count on me for anything, old pal. But it'll be tough on you, though. It always is the first trip, you know. Get on board quick, here comes the skipper now.
Well, Dad, I got myself into this mess. <laughs> I'll say you did. I love Louise, Dad. But she feels that Jose is still alive. I've got to find out for her and for myself, one way or the other. And you've got to help me. Come on, Dad. Don't be a grouch. I want to do my bit. Come on, Dad. Dish it out. I can take it. You'll have plenty to do before you get back to San Pedro. Just wait till we strike tuna. You can take over the mate's duty. On the level, Dad. Skipper, do you? Okay, Skipper. That's all I wanted to know. On the lookout to the south. Our search for Jose got underway. On the bridge one day, I was a living witness to a sight beyond description. For miles along the coast of this Pacific island, I saw birds of all sizes, shapes, and colors. Further around the island, I saw another side I wouldn't have believed if Dad had told me. Maybe that's why he let me see for myself. But there it was, as real as my first long pants. Hundreds, yes, hundreds of sea lions and sea elephants. While I have had the privilege of seeing mammals of this type, they were limited in numbers. I never dreamed in my wildest imagination that someday I would see hundreds at play. I hung on the rail for what seemed like hours, watching our friends play. It was a sight watching the little ones trying to keep pace with their folks. Dad told me that the people living on these islands were placed there for the purpose of guarding these remnants of native elephant seal herds. Sought after by hunters and collectors, the once plentiful animals faced the extinction already meted out to the Guadalupe fur seal. I didn't realize how time had passed until I noticed the ship had slowed down to almost a stop. I think Dad had sensed my enthusiasm and was chuckling to himself watching me. I couldn't understand why the entire crew didn't share my enthusiasm, but I realized that this was routine to them, and in their many voyages through the South Seas had seen sights that topped even this one. After sailing for days, I started getting my sea legs. In fact, I felt as if I had been a seagoing man all my life. Of course, the weather had been excellent and we had smooth waters. Had it been rough, maybe I wouldn't have been so fortunate. We passed many small uninhabited islands before our first stop. All eyes were ahead as we pulled alongside the island. Since Dad had sailed these waters time and again, he was friendly with the majority of native chiefs who could give us some information as to the shipwrecked crew of the Miami. After dining in royal fashion with the chief, he acted as our personal guide around the island. Our first stop was the old swimming hole. 
Native style with a huge waterfall as a backdrop. Natives were splashing and diving from rocks like Tom Sawyer and his gang playing hooky from school. information concerning Jose and the shipwrecked Miami, we decided to continue our voyage. But the chief insisted that we witness one more sight before we shoved off. Standing near the edge of the Coral Island, where we could look down into the bottom, the chief spoke a few well-chosen native words, and we had a ringside seat to an underwater show. decided to have some fun. Swift as lightning, he took out after him. Much to our amazement, he grabbed the turtle and without asking his permission, hitchhiked an underwater ride. The underwater exhibition continued with performances by many of the island's best swimmers. we noticed a man-eating shark heading toward the swimmers. Paralyzed, we watched as the native boy swam to rescue the girl. Without a moment to spare, the natives on shore pulled the performers to safety. Continuing our voyage through the South Seas, we visited island after island and talked to chief after chief, always receiving the same answer. No wrecked ship, no Jose, no information. It was discouraging, but we kept hoping that somewhere in our travels we would get a lead on the missing crew. My thoughts turned more and more to Jose and what fate he had met. travels, we saw many strange sights and met many new and interesting people. I'll never forget one island, because the chief was one day we dropped anchor in a small lagoon. Dreamily gazing into the crystal clear water, I felt that I was part of the sea life below. one fish on a merry hike around the bottom of the lagoon. Then my eyes wandered ahead of him, and I was horrified to see a killer of the deep, an octopus behind a rock waiting for my friend. I jumped up and shouted warnings before I realized that it was useless. He kept swimming right into the hands of the octopus. Then the killer struck. My friend was lucky in breaking away, but the octopus doesn't give up a meal so easily. A 
Amore Il goes to the rescue and also to settle an age-old dispute with his deadly enemy, the Octopus. was soon spread throughout the bottom of the lagoon. deadly enemy, the octopus, on his back, they swarm all over the aggressor, for while he lives, there can be no peace in the deep. Together, they can destroy him, no matter how strong he might be. Is victor, and peace reigns throughout the lagoon. Continuing our search for Jose, we approached an island to make one of our routine inquiries. The answer was the same, no information. I was surprised to find this island much different from those we had visited on our voyage. People still live. Bowls made by native hands served as a mixing base for meal and other grains that had to be ground. It was almost impossible to believe that here in the big shift methods to carry on their life. But seeing is completely oblivious to the modern methods developed. You look and wonder at these natives who willingly accept the old crude methods of living here on this Pacific Coral Island. It's splendid adventure for a visitor, but your revelation isn't boring and lonely. Time for loneliness and none for idling. Nothing. Take a look, Cap. Sure, go to it. I see natives over there. Some huts there, too. Why, that looks like the keel of the old Miami. Boys, get the skiff over. We're going ashore. Come on. 
sit down, please. Thanks there, Chief. I see you speak very good English. Oh, yes. Thank you. You know, my friend, one must always be prepared. I mean, the more you know, the less you have to learn. <laughs> Quite a philosopher. <laughs> Kimaru! Kimaru! Polygonese! Polygonese! Well, my people want to honor you. You see, it is seldom we have visitors. What brings you to the island, Captain? Trouble with your ship? No, no, no trouble at all. I see you're quite a fisherman, too. Ah, yes. Very bad boy. Very mean, too. What's this? This, my friend, for centuries is the only fear of my people. Is it a killer? Yes, a deadly killer. Only until a few years ago, no one can fish in these waters here. And this one is black and white, but there is still another. He got away, and no one has been able to catch him. Not even Harlow. Well, um, who caught this one? The only survivor of the wreck. Is he still on the island? Harlow! What a fisherman! Is it him? Yeah. So you see, my friends, we're very proud of him. I should think you would be proud of him. Yes. When I am dead, he will be the chief of my tribe. Uh, by the way, Captain, how long are you staying on the island? Oh, I don't know. We may be shoving on tomorrow. Hmm. Before you go, you feast with us tonight. Thanks, Chief. It'll be our pleasure. Hmm. for you to eat. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Let us eat. I've been waiting for you. I thought you were waiting. <laughs> yes, I'm waiting for you to eat. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, come, Maya. What is the trouble, child? You're not hungry? Oh, what love is done to the beautiful daughter of the island. <laughs> oh, by the way, hello. Are you aware we have visitors from the mainland? Visitors? From the mainland? Yes. Yeah. And they show great interest in our specimen of the devil fish. White woman come too, father? Oh, no, 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 May. I do not think so. Uh, uh, Marlo! Marlo! Bring the pipe, you fool! It seems as though he has everything to make him happy in these parts. 
Oh, nonsense, son. What do you know about the tropics? Do you hear that? Drums. Day and night. I tell you, we've got to get him out of here tonight. Hey, Mac. Bring up my fiddle. And get that case of scotch, too. We're going ashore tonight on a party. A Shanghai party. Cabal Jamba, Cabal Jamba. All right. Cabal Jamba, no. It'll be all right now. Don't worry. This baby will set you right down where you want to be set. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the last part. Oh, it's all the line. Wait a minute. No, no, no. I want to one. I can't want to one. I want to one. I want to That's the one that'll do the trick. I want to one. I want to one. Oh, oh, yo, oh, no. <laughs> By the way, Chief, um, where's Harlow? Oh, uh, he is busy with the books and music and the uh, poetry and very fine musician. And my, uh... <laughs> well, that ought to be nice. Oh, yeah. Jose, me go dance now.
você. Moro! Moro! Como me aprende o furo? Ai! Arichi! And how do you like my daughter's dad? She was wonderful. And a beautiful girl. A real beauty. <laughs> that is nothing. Wait for the beast. <laughs> Come on, let everybody have a drink. Super Sronia, that's the cabana. Everybody have a drink. Everything's set. Now's a good time to go, Tad. Let's go. Be careful, boys, what you say. You better let me do the talking. Well, Captain, what brings you here? You see, uh, we're not permitted to fish for tuna on the Mexican coast. And the chief tells me you have rare abilities as a fisherman. You know, um, we can always use a man like you. Jose, we've come all this distance in search of you. Not for ourselves. You know that. I know exactly why you're here. But it's too late. It wouldn't be fair to the ones who love me. I'm not fit, I tell you. I belong here. I'm one of them now. Yes, Jose. What you lie for? What you lie for? Get out! Quiet, get out! Quiet, get out! Quiet. You big devils! All right, quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jose. I will have a drink now. Sure. You see, Captain, I knew you'd understand. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Good morning, Jose. How you feeling, fella? Come on, get up, kid. I wonder how he's gonna take it, son. He'll be all right, Dad, when he realizes what you've done for him. See, Jose? We didn't have anything to do with this. It was your mother's wish. Go ahead. Eat your breakfast. It's getting cold. All right, fella. These are strange waters to me. Looks like whale out there. It looks like we'll never get around to any tuna. Jose well, ought to know something about these waters. Hello, Jose. How are you feeling? Much better, kid. Hey, here's a hat I dug up. Sure. And I guess a pretty good pair of pants. You can take off that old junk. 
You can get cleaned up. I guess you could use a shave, too, couldn't you? <laughs> you wait here, I'll be right back. Gotta get some hot water. Plenty of whale in these waters, Skipper. <laughs> Poor Mary Lou. Did you really love her? Oh, yeah, I wanted to give her a break, but you ought to see the one I got now. I imagine so. I may fall in love with her myself, you know. Hey, not a chance. I'm going to get married as soon as I get in Pietro. Maybe there'll be a double wedding. Yeah, you mean Robert and Louise. Huh? You don't mean Louise is a school teacher? Yeah, sure. Well, there you are. The skipper wants to see you in the pilot house. So Louise is going to marry Robert. I wonder. Hello, skipper. You look like a new man now. You feel that? All right, I guess. I'm afraid I've got to ask you for help. Is there any place near here where we can strike tuna? I think so. We'll be in tuna grounds within a few hours. Leave it all to me, and you take it easy. It's all yours, boy. Call me when you strike them. OK, Skipper. Tuna, Jose. You get tuna for them. But give them the great devil fish, too. Don't let Robert have the girl you love. Take them to the devil's hole. He's crazy, I tell you. There's no tuna in these waters. What's wrong, man? Why don't you tell the captain to head for the mainland? I know we can get tuna there. Oh, uh, Jose's all right. Why don't you leave it to the skipper? He knows what he's doing. Yeah, better think that over. I know what I'm talking about, too. Dad? Dad? Oh, Dad? Yeah? What do you want? I think you're in wrong with the crew. What about? About Jose. The men think he's insane, and they have no confidence in him as a fisherman. They want to return to the mainland, their own fishing banks. I'm in command here. And I'm using good judgment. OK, you're the skipper. But I'm warning you. Forget it. Let me sleep. Hello, Jose. Hello. Heading farther south, eh? I didn't know there was tuna in these waters. There's a lot of things you don't know, young fellow. About the sea, I mean. Say, you're not a fisherman, are you? Thanks to Dad, no. Vacation trip, huh? Well, this is no life for a decent married man anyway. Who, me married? <laughs> no. Tuna! 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 Well, I guess you're right again. Come on, boys! Get your pools ready. They're biting on both sides. Better get them while they're hot.
Good work, boy. I knew you'd come through. George, Skipper! I'll take care of them. Get your men on the tuna, Skipper. Boy, are they hungry. Come on, boys. Start shoveling. Feed them a little. They fighting. Look at those big fellas come in. Look out, you caught my line. I never saw so many tuna. in fast. Get me the spike, quick! I'll get rid of Dolphin! Dolphin! Plenty of them! The elephant skipper running about the same size. Hey, look out for my face. Hey, Tiny! What about the coffee? Coming right up, skipper! Fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen cups coffee? No, nah, fifteen sharks caught by Jose. That guy can fish. Look out, Jose. It's a tiger.
You need any help? Help? What do I need help for? To hold a cup of petticoats? <laughs> oh. Put up a great fight, baby, but you don't mix with tuna. <laughs> I'm not getting any more bites. How about you? They're not biting anymore. I think the tuna's thinning out. Sharks down there. Come on, they're piling up on a support ship. Boy, I'm half dead. Me too. Devil fish! Devil fish! What does it mean? A vicious sea monster. The natives call it devil fish. Call the captain. Come on, let's get out of these waters. Hey, Skipper. What do you want? There's a queer-looking sea monster out here. Prunes ready, men, and rig up the bowsprit. Come on, men. Snap out of it. What are you going to do? Don't you worry about me. I'll do my part.
Atta boy, Jose. Pull him in. Go. Come on, boys. Come on, let's go. Get Robert aboard the ship. Tiny. Tiny. Help Robert aboard ship. Come on, boys. Lend a hand. Come on, Jose. We're all for you. Give it to him, Jose. Out of the cabin, quick! We found him, Dad. But he had two arms, and we've taken one away. Why didn't we leave him there? Louise. What will Louise think?
Pull up the anchor, boys. We're heading home. Okay, Skipper. I'm sailing my way back home, just sailing my way back home. Seasick and weary and heartsick and dreary, I'm sailing my way back home. I'm sailing my way back home. Never no more to roam, to father, to mother, to sister and brother. I'm sailing my way back home. Well, pal, how you doing? I'll be all right. Well, we'll be home most any time now. Jose, you're a great guy. I'll never forget what you've done for me. Never. Forget it, Robert. I'll be all right. How is he, son? He's all right. I never knew a man could have such strength, physically and mentally. It's been a great experience. St. Pietro Harbor ahead! Just an old Spanish custom. Robert! 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 Tell me, Jose? Yes, we found him. Oh. But... Well, what is it? Well, how can I tell you, Louise? There was an accident, and Jose... Well, he lost an arm. He's on his way home now. Look, there he goes. Oh, Robert. Can I ever thank you? Jose! 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 Where is he? Where is my boy? Robert told me everything. So sorry. But you you've brought complete happiness to two lonely women.